Sutton Hoo is a site in the southeast of England. Comprised of a series of mounds, these mysterious lumps in the landscape have long had stories gather around them. In 1939, the land was owned by Mrs. Edith Pretty, who, along with her friends, shared a staunch belief in spiritualism. The mounds of Sutton Hoo gained the spiritualists' interest, because they claimed they could see shadowy figures walking amongst them. Not least, a man sat proudly on a horse atop one of the largest mounds in the set. In 1937, Mrs. Pretty hired the help of self-taught local archaeologist Basil Brown, and, with the help of the gardener and the gamekeeper, the three of them set to excavating one of the larger mounds at Sutton Hoo. By the end of the summer of 1939, they had uncovered one of the largest ship burials in all of Europe. The site was believed to have been a burial mound for an ancient king, and soon they did come across what they believed to have been the burial site itself. The chamber had collapsed, and many of the objects within were in a state of decay. Still covered in mud, they had to be boxed up, however, because something was on the horizon. Within a month, the Second World War had been declared, and Germany brought with it the horrors of the Blitz upon London. Due to this, most of the finds from Sutton Hoo had to be hidden underground in a disused London tube station, and they remained there until 1947 or 1948. It was immediately obvious that Sutton Hoo had been a cultural as well as literal treasure trove of a find. Finely made objects such as solid gold belt buckles and solid gold and finely enamelled shoulder clasps were some of the most staggering objects in the collection. Even the so-called purse, which contained money, was in its own right a stunning work of art. The coins contained within spoke of relationships across the whole of Europe, including 37 coins from the Merovingian kings. The coins dated the grave to around 600 AD, and the other objects within, such as the finely crafted sword, seemed to jump straight from the pages of Beowulf. Every object was richly adorned with fine trappings and decorations. This, for example, is not a standalone treasure. It goes on the front of a shield, conceivably to be struck at with a sword. All told, the trappings of the Sutton Hoo burial mound told of a king who was well respected and loved, who loved gold and money, and who loved music. However, when British Museum curator Herbert Marion came to a series of metal plaques, he knew that this must have been the death mask for the king within the mound. Immediately there was an attempt to reconstruct what the helmet must have looked like. However, this reconstruction came to be extremely controversial, as it would have left its user exposed in battle. The neck and the face were barely protected at all. So, in 1968, the helmet was reconstructed by Rupert Bruce Mitford, the then Keeper of Medieval Antiquities. It has since become an icon of Britain and a centrepiece of the British Museum. Millions now flock to see this treasure and muse over who the owner might have been. He is believed to have been King Raedwald, an early Christian Saxon ruler in the southeast of England. He commanded respect from his people and fostered vast trade networks across the known world. For better or worse, Sutton Hoo and the mask therein has come to represent for many the beginnings of Englishness in these islands of Britain. And for many more, King Raedwald's helmet is one of the first archaeological objects which we are introduced to in school. However, for many archaeologists, it is the story of how this site has survived the challenges and turmoils of the modern era that makes it most remarkable. Yes, Sutton Hoo and the objects contained within are truly incredible. But what is even more incredible is that these remnants of an ancient king survived to this day.